This is a stainless, stainless steel lever bar. And take that stainless steel lever bar and you spin it over in here. That gives you the lev leverage to turn it. So I haven't turned it in a while, but. So you can just turn it wherever you want during the year. Wow, you moved your whole house with <laughs> one person. I mean, it's, it's torque. What, why, how can you move a whole house with just, is it just that the mechanics underneath are so well? Yeah, and, and it's a pretty heavy little building in the end, but uh, the ball bearings and the, and the steel wheels we came up with, I think work really well, plus that lever arm. <laughs> Oh, didn't make it past that low spot. Come help me push on this, will you? Okay, it's stuck at this oh, low yeah, this spot. Is the... This is the low spot. Go back. Okay. I've been thinking about this idea of a rotating house for years. All right, now we can go for it. Okay. <laughs> These are my friends who live here. They finally, <laughs> they finally gave in and said, "All right, we'll we'll build your damn idea on our property." here in Portland, Oregon, really in the core of Portland, Oregon. The idea is really a house with the majority of the glass, almost all the glass on one side, so you can rotate it either to address the sun and gain that heat, or in the summer months, turn it away from the sun so you don't have the heat. So it's really all about energy conservation as well as view orientation. Yes, and right now, this would be more the summer? Uh, no, th this is the setting sun. So this is the hottest sun. So actually in the summer, you'd want it kind of facing east. But they also rent this out when their friends aren't here. So they can turn it away from their backyard. So the renters have some privacy too. So what's the, what kind of mechanism do you have? You can peek at it. It's just a steel, really simple steel bezel with some casters on it and some ball bearings in the casters. So super simple, really rudimentary steel, just a bottom rail and a top rail. Then that foundation is pretty deep. It's probably three and a half feet of concrete for the wind load, so it doesn't tip over. That's the weight for the base for wind and seismic for earthquakes. But then the bezel itself is super simple. One of the hardest permitting issues on this project was the sewage all runs down the center of the building and that's a rotating four inch coupling for the toilet and the shower and the kitchen sink that we had to work out with the city of Portland to use something only used in the natural gas industry because it's a rotating four inch coupling that's using natural gas that we applied to a plumbing fixture and they were like, oh my God, never, never, we're not going to do it. But finally acquiesced and so that's the main connection for the plumbing. And that allows this thing to spin around on a waistline. And so it goes to city sewer, city water, hookup, city electrical, all through the rotating base. This is also at the nexus of micro living. And it's 12 by 12, 12 feet by 12 feet. Why is that? So sheetrock comes in four foot sections, plywood comes in four foot, so 12 by 12 works within the module of construction in the United States. Yeah, so, I see. So it yeah. makes the sheetrocking easier, the framing easier. But the real driver was just, we got a living room, a dining room, a bedroom, and a kitchen, and a yeah. bathroom in 12 by 12, okay. so why go bigger? So it's kind of amazing if you think about 144 square feet, what you can actually get into it if you just think about it. There's also been a general movement towards smaller kitchens. And toaster oven. Toaster oven, yeah. yeah. Get a turkey in there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I think it's amazing with these, these small cooktops and a refrigerator. You, you can essentially do everything in this kitchen that you could do in a full-size kitchen. And then we only have two heaters in the whole place. So again, it's all about energy efficiency. So that window wall can easily heat this whole building, even in the winter. And you're always, and especially with full light glass. Yeah. You're always outside, essentially. And then if it's really cold and no sun, then we can turn on those two heaters. So we have a closet here. Uh, again, 100, 144 square feet. I have a closet here, and we have a second closet here in the um, bathroom. And then full shower, full-size shower, of course, full-size toilet, nothing shrunk down there. 
obviously this is really different. To have a rotating house, the plumbing has to be... I mean, did you need to center the, the plumbing and the... So we thought about that, the toilet. We thought about, wow, does that have to be on the center? So that, that four, the four inch line is the big one coming from the toilet, of course. But what we did in the end was put that rotating piece dead center. So the rotating piece has to be absolutely dead center in order to successfully rotate. And then all the plumbing was joined. Just imagine all this plumbing okay. fixed, just like right. a house. And that all joins like in a house and comes to the center. Okay. And up from the center comes the main four inch waistline going down to the city sewer. It's where those all join and right. hitting that rotating bezel. And that has to... And that's what's right. rotating like this. But that still sounds difficult. It's, yeah, it's a little weird. It's a little weird. The city thought it was weird and the city yeah. said no for a long time, but then they finally said yes. Yeah. Why did they finally say yes? Portland's pretty progressive. I think if you have a good reason for doing something, they'll yeah. support you. Yeah. Most cities would say no, yeah. but Portland keeps trying to innovate. Wow, it's, a, it's an incline, isn't it? Yeah, 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 it is an incline. <laughs> It is an incline. So here's the bedroom. <laughs> so the bedroom I think is 12 by 8, full closet, uh, queen size bed, and then ceiling fan, and then we use juniper on the ceiling and the floor. So the idea was then you wanted this to go up, the house to go up, because if you were going to try to get the same square footage and go out more. Yeah, right then the bezel gets bigger and heavier and the whole footprint gets bigger and heavier. But 12 by 12, the whole idea, you can actually put a crane on this. So it's all built to be actually picked up and moved. So 12 feet is the maximum width of shipping, trucking in the country. Okay. So this would fit and not be over cost for trucking across the country. So if Ethan and Becca wanted to move this to their vacation home somewhere, they could actually put this on a flatbed and replace it to some other location, which is nice. So you would just have to get the sewage line right yeah, placed right. in the center yep. wherever you drop it. Yep. And that's probably the hardest part, or is... Yeah, you could also, you could do it in an outhouse setup, just have it drop into a, right into a hole out in the country, you know, which would be kind of interesting. Though you have to have the water plumbed in. Yeah. So, we, um, the first iteration to be totally off-grid is a full solar panel doing all the battery packs, and then just a hose bib or rain collection. <laughs> We'd like to try this, but in a complete off-grid model, mm -hmm. it just adds quite a bit of cost because of the solar panels and the water treatment. <laughs> so I'm six, uh, maybe three. So we have lots of space here. Here, you know, this. Oh my gosh, we're moving! We're moving! Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! <laughs> oh my gosh! This is so fun! Yep. Is there a trampoline? Wow! Over there? <laughs> Let me cook something That's for you. great. Oh my gosh, wow. Wasn't that heavy? Uh, I didn't feel your guys' weight. She made us trying to move it. She's pushing. That, that might be tough on that part. All right, here's, here's the key, you guys. Without this, it would be kind of hard because this gives you the leverage. So you take this thing. Okay, now you guys all got to push. Push really, really hard on this part. You ready? Let's get it going. Oh my gosh. Has this been done before? Uh, rotating houses have been done really large on huge train tracks, but I've never seen a small house done. You're moving a house. <laughs> you just moved the house. You guys just moved a house. That's crazy. All codes are just made for building stuff. Don't yeah. move. When so, uh, we face these codes that talk about windows not facing your neighbors, and, and you ex you try to explain that, no, no, that my building is going to rotate. That's a good what point. What do they tell you? And that's really a particular question for Portland, because Portland has these weird codes around the front door has to face the street, for instance, right? I mean, that's what makes a home in Portland is the front door addressing the street. But I think Portland is very progressive. If you have a good idea, that they think is a good idea, they'll kind of embrace it and try to cultivate it and get over the hurdles that are usual in place. I could never do this in Boston. I could never do this in Pittsburgh. But here, Portland, I think they're a little more interested in innovating. I know they're more interested in innovating, yeah. And we're going all the way around. Let's go all the way around. Okay, ready? Let's go. The name of the project is called 359. 
because it doesn't quite go all the way around. That's the 359. So now it goes all the way around to the other side. Okay, you guys ready? So it spins 359 degrees and then you got to go back. Otherwise the electrical and the plumbing would get bound up. Good. Good exercise, good upper body. Do you think this could be the beginning of some trends? Could yeah, be exactly. affordable without missing exactly. quality? Because um, yeah. the idea is you can build these in a factory or in a warehouse. And then good design, right? So you yeah. could actually be in a place that's kind of fun to live in, so. How would you manage this idea of trying to uh, do things that could be serial with, let's say, locality? How would you integrate the logo? That's a good question. So the siding and the flooring in there is yeah. juniper. And it's this really cool looking craggy tree. And it's, it's an invasive species here in the Northwest. And so they've been purposefully cutting this down because it consumes a ton of water, I guess. So we're, we're now here in the Northwest experimenting with juniper. It is a tough material to work with because it bucks a lot and it kind of expands and contracts a lot because it's very knotty. So it has a kind of interesting characteristics. But nonetheless, we are all trying to figure out what we can do with juniper rather than cutting it down and burning it. So I think the, there's always an opportunity to explore for what's the area describing the design to be. Yeah. So it, it'd be more, you agree that it'd be more like Almost like furniture or yeah, industrial design? Yeah, this is more design. of a furniture piece. You're right. It's more of a piece of furniture that you live in. It's more than livable. I mean, the steps, despite being steep, I see that the bars on the sides, they are sturdy and they are made to last. And then the kitchen is not something awkward. You just can use it and then light is coming, especially if you move the building so you have the light yeah. in your car. Yeah, right. Yeah, I'm glad, so, you're, I'm glad you appreciate it. Some people are like, ah, the house rotates and they leave and like... <laughs> <laughs>